Welcome to the AP Physics Workbook Solution. Here we have Unit 7, Torque and Rotation. This section is 7.H, Rotational Kinetic Energy. Here you could read the scenario for yourself. Pause the video if you would like more time. Part A, on this diagram, you're going to draw and label all the forces, not the components, to clearly, to clearly indicate at which point the wheel each force is exerted. Draw the force using the correct arrows, okay? Here you should see that there are a couple forces. First of all, there's always the force of gravity. Okay, goes from the center to the ground. Is that correct? No, right? Because this is on a ramp. Okay, make sure you go straight down to the ground. This is force of gravity. Okay, and we have the opposite force, which is the force normal. Is that correct? Wrong. Force normal has to be perpendicular to the distance. So it should be like this. Okay. Because again, right? You see how it's perpendicular? Okay. And then the force tension. So force tension is this way. Right? Sorry, no, not force tension. Force friction. Is that correct? Wrong. Force friction is on the surface. So it's right here because that's the point that it's touching the ground. All right. So from here, now you're going to sketch and label the energy chart of the hoop earth system. Again, pause the video, do your best. And before there, I'm going to give you some notes. Okay. The total energy at any point of a vertical distance above the base of an incline is given by this. What this is, is that this is kinetic energy in the translational so that is something that looks like this one half i center of mass angular velocity no angular velocity which is omega squared this is k of r that's rotational kinetic energy mgh that is potential so this is just gravitational potential that's going to be ug okay that's what each one of these stands for all right so this is how do you describe an energy of a object. So from here, at the top of the ramp, it should have all potential energy because it's not rotating or moving at the top. Okay. Let me fill this in. All right. Copy that. Then at the bottom, Okay. Then at the bottom, it's going to have what? Okay. Is it all going to be potential? No. At the bottom, it would have no more potential. Okay. It's going to be split between kinetic and rotation depending on its, does it give us its eye, a thin hoop? So it should have a thin hoop. It should have a lot. It should have a lot of moment of inertia. So let's do something like this. Okay. All right. So there should be more. I'm trying to grab a little bit more of it. Okay. There should be more rotational. And oh no. Let me grab this. Oh, that's why. Okay. So you see how I slightly grabbed more kinetic rotational, and this is the rest of it. Okay. Because again, you want to make sure it matches it up because the air, the area for the potential energy has to be the area of the kinetic rotation plus the kinetic translational. Okay. Good. Because in the bottom, there is no potential energy, all right? It's all kinetic because it's both rotating and moving in a line at the bottom. Derive an expression for the speed of the center of mass of the hoop as it reaches down. All right, so like what we said here, E top is equal to the E bottom. That's total energy before or on top of the ramp is to the energy in the bottom of the ramp. All right, let's do that. 
E top is going to be equal to the E of the bottom. Okay, energy on the top, which was only UG. There's three parts, but these go to zero, okay? On the bottom, there are three, but UG was zero. It's just KR and KT. KR and KT. All right, UG is MGH. H is the height. Kinetic translation, one-half MV squared. And KR, which is one-half I omega squared. Nothing happens here. Nothing happens here, but there is a substitution that we need to know. You need to know from your moment of inertia chart that the moment of inertia for a thinly hoop is going to be I is equal to VR. Okay. Plug in the rest, omega squared. That should be in red. Omega squared. All right. Okay. Oops, oops, oops. Did I make a mistake? Yep, I made a mistake. The I here is not VR squared. Sorry. This is wrong. This is wrong. This is wrong. Thinly sliced hoop is this one m r squared so this should be m r squared right the omega is what becomes that so omega the angular omega is defined as the lo um v over r right you might have seen this version of it. Velocity is equal to R times W. Radius times omega. So cross this out. You have here the substitution V over R. And remember the square, it's here. So all that I did here is just plug in what the moment of inertia is and the substitution for angular velocity. So it should simplified. MGH is on the left. MV squared plus this becomes one half. MR squared. V squared. R squared. You should see certain things start canceling out. Okay. We don't need the mass. All the masses cancel out, right? One half V squared plus um, M cancels out. R squared and R squared cancels out here. So it's just one half V squared. Okay. Here you have one half V squared plus one half V squared. Just V squared equals to GH. Here's the question that you need to know is the height. I think I gave you a triangle here. Yep. So here for any ramp, if you want to know the height, it is defined by L sine theta. And that assumes that the length is defined by L. There is a theta value that is on the below of the ramp. If you want to know the distance here, it's L cosine, but the height is L sine theta. Okay. So I'm going to make that substitution here. L is equal um, H height of the ramp is L sine theta. Make that substitution. L sine theta. This is G V squared. So this is G L sine theta is equal to V squared. So V is equal to the square root of G L sine theta. There you go.
right? The next one, okay, you're gonna do right, uh, determine an expression for the distance. The distance is a very straightforward equation. You, distance is just your rate, or in this case, speed or velocity times your time, okay? We have the velocities right there. So D is equal to our velocity. So this is a uh, square root G L sine theta. Goes in the square root, close it. We just need time, okay? How do we get time? Time always comes from our kinematics equation. So we're gonna do that separately here. And it's always your squared one. You might have seen this version x is equal to x naught plus vx zero plus one half ax t squared. You might have seen this version. We don't need this one. We need the y version of it. So this is just going to be written, but now just in terms of y, okay? So y is going to be equal to y naught plus vy t plus one half a t squared y minus y naught is going to be equal to this the initial becomes zero this is going to be equal to one half a t squared but we know what the a y is okay a y is just gravity t squared this is going to be defined as height because again right think about y initial y naught that change, that displacement in the vertical is just height. So if you need to see that y final minus y naught. H is going to be equal to 1 half gt squared. Okay, you should have seen this equation before. So doing the math, t is going to be equal to the square root 2h over g. Okay, you should already get used to this. This is a kinematics equation. This could also be memorized, right? Plug that in here. 2hg. Okay. You could leave it here, but if you want to do some more um, algebra, you know, g and g here cancels uh, L. So it should look like distance is equal to square root. You see the G and the G here cancels. So all you have is L sine theta 2H, but that's an ugly way of writing it. So let me just write it first. So square root 2H, G, no, G cancels. So L sine theta, that looks better. Yeah, okay, there you go. So that's the distance. So let me write, yeah, distance, okay. Next, suppose the hoop is now replaced by a disc, okay? I want you to understand this. Watch the moment of inertia video, okay? It's gonna sort of talk about the moment of inertia for a disc and a hoop. So I grabbed this from the initial video on moment of inertia, so I'm not gonna go over it. You have to watch that video if you want a more in-depth situation. So here you want to see that how will the distance from the edge of the table where the disc land on the floor compare to the distance here, okay? So you should see that the solid disc has less than the thin version here. Notice that if you rank which one will fall down the ramp first, you would see that the solid disc will come first when compared to the thin loop here fourth why here's the math on it okay this the solid sphere will have more ke translational and the ke translational for the thin hoop is going to have less all right so watch the video if you want a more detailed explanation okay so now you can try to attempt to do part e and this is what i said the disc has a smaller rotational inertia than the thin hoop because the mass of the disc is distributed centered while the thin hoop is only located at the outwards. Having a smaller rotational inertia means that the gravitational potential will be covered to more 
will be converted to more of the translational kinetic energy rather than the rotational kinetic energy. With more translational kinetic energy, the object will travel faster, meaning that we will cover a greater distance with the same amount of time when compared to before. Therefore, the disc will land on the floor farther from the edge than the table. Again, please watch the moment of inertia video to get a more in-depth explanation here, but this is your answer for part E.